Now let's examine some of the other property windows that we have available. Most importantly, the Solution Explorer, which is located by default on the right-hand side of your screen. If you don't see it, select View, Solution Explorer, or select Ctrl-Alt-L to view the Solution Explorer. As with any of the other windows, you can choose to dock the window by pinning it using the Auto Hide button. Depending on the application type you're working with, you'll see a variety of different files, references, and properties available in your Solution Explorer. In this case, we created a WPF application, so by default, this will be in a solution called WPF application, and inside of that, we'll have a project folder called WPF application. You can leverage the properties window, which is located on the lower right-hand side of your screen, to view the different settings based on what you're selecting in the Solution Explorer. Between the variety of different applications you can create with Visual Studio 2008, you'll find that there's a strong amount of consistency between the solution items that you'll see in the Solution Explorer. Let's take a look at some of these. In the Properties folder, you'll find the metadata for your project. One file is called Assembly Info. It ends with a CS because we chose a C Sharp application. If we had selected a Visual Basic application, the file extension would be VB. Double click on this. This will load the file into your code editor. As you can see, this file provides metadata based on my assembly or my application. As you can see, the title is called WPF Application. This is picked up from the project name. I could change this here and give it a different name should I wish. I could provide trademark information, copyright information. I can also scroll down and select version information for my application. By default, it will begin with version 1.0.0.0. Let's take a look at some of the other properties that are available in my Solution Explorer. Under the References folder, I'll see references to particular DLLs that I may choose to use for this particular application. In this case, because I chose a WPF application, I'll see that I have access to the Presentation Core, the System Core, System Data, System XML. By default, this template will assume, because I chose a WPF application or a desktop application, that more than likely I'll want to do some kind of presentation. I may want to do some data. So instead of me having to add those references by hand, the template will automatically provide them for me. I can add additional references should I choose by right-clicking on the References folder and selecting Add Reference. Because I'm working with the 3.5 version of the framework, I can see all the different DLLs that are available to me based on the framework that I'm working with. So I'll be able to see link and system.server and all the applications that came out in the 3.5 edition. I can also work with previous editions of the framework, such as system.web. Because 3.5 builds upon existing versions of the framework, such as 2.0, I can be assured of backwards compatibility as a system.web namespace is still 2.0 and has not changed for 3.5. 3.5 merely supplements the existing libraries with additional libraries, as you can see in your Add References dialog. I can also add references to COM projects, COM projects being legacy projects that are not built in .NET. If I had selected one of these and chose to add these to my project, Visual Studio will automatically provide a wrapper for me for the COM project. This means Visual Studio will provide a managed interface for me for which to connect to the COM component. If I have other projects that I've created, I can choose to view them in the Projects window. I can browse to other DLLs that may be located on the machine, or I can leverage the Recent tab to look at recent components that I had referenced. Cancel out of this dialog. Another important concept to understand with the Solution Explorer is the idea that Presentation Layer and Application Layer are separated. In the case of a WPF file, you'll have the presentation layer stored in a XAML file with an XAML extension. By double-clicking on this, I can see my design surface. Tucked underneath the presentation file or the XAML file, you'll find a C-sharp file that represents the code behind or the code file behind the presentation file. By double-clicking on this, this will drop me into the code, the C-sharp code that I can use to program against the presentation layer. The presentation layer provides me a canvas onto which I can drop objects or directly write presentation code below in XAML. This model applies for Windows Forms and ASP.NET, as we'll see next. Let's go ahead and examine this by selecting File, New, Project. In this case, let's create a Windows Forms application by selecting Windows, Windows Forms, 
and let's see how the Solution Explorer varies based on project type. As you can see in the Solution Explorer, there are a lot of similarities. You have the properties, references, and you also have the files that belong to that form. They're all stored underneath the solution and then the project. You can have multiple projects underneath your solution by right-clicking on your solution and selecting Add New Project or Existing Project. Let's drill down into some of these properties. As before, you'll have an assembly info. Assembly info again provides the metadata. So whether you're using a WPF application or a Windows form application, you'll find that the metadata is consistent. You'll have a resources where you can store resources such as images or icons that are appropriate for your application. The settings provides you the ability to set conditional settings and store them based on the application or the user by using the scope dropdown. By default, these settings can be retrieved when an application starts and it might provide default user interface instructions such as form size, background color, etc. Or it could provide user interface options for user's color preferences or the last item that a user had viewed. Some applications choose to store the database connection in the settings file. Later in this series, we'll cover best practices for storing the connection string. Now let's take a look at a VB version of a Windows Form application. Select File, New, Project, and choose the language as VB, and select Windows Forms application. Choose not to save your changes. You can see that there's a little bit of difference here. The Solution Explorer has been simplified a little bit. You'll also see something called My Project. All the settings are available to you that you saw in C Sharp by selecting the Show All Files button. This will unhide some of the more advanced features such as the references and the binary directory and the object directory. As a Visual Basic programmer myself, I prefer to use the Show All Files option so I have full control over my Solution Explorer. Inside the My Project directory, you'll see all the different application settings that you saw in the C Sharp folder, such as the assembly info, the settings, and the resources. You'll also see the application My App, which allows you to configure the main form, sub-main form, and other designer options in a much more simplified manner using XML. By double-clicking on the settings, you'll see a similar interface that you saw with C Sharp. Likewise with references. In this case, we're using a Windows form, so instead of seeing the presentation core, I see the system core, and the system drawing where the drawing controls are provided. I also see a reference to system.windows.forms that has all the different form logic that I may choose to use with my window. Similar to a WPF application, I see a canvas. In this case, it's a form. If I look at my form object in my Solution Explorer, I can see behind the scenes it has a form designer VV. This represents the separation between presentation logic and code logic. From here, I can take a look at the inheritance of my form. In this case, I see it inherits from system windows forms.form. As we mentioned earlier, all the forms in Visual Studio and the .NET framework are objects. If I create my own form object and put some Chrome on it, such as a global navigation, maybe a search button, and a title bar, I can then use that form as a means of inheritance for any future forms. So instead of saying system.windows.forms.form, I can say inherits my form or whatever name I wish to give to my form. Because they're all objects that can inherit naturally from one another, not only in code, but also in the designer. We'll show an example of this later when we get to the Windows Forms component in this series. Select File, New, Project, and select a web application. In this case, we'll choose an ASP.NET web application. Leave the defaults intact and select OK. For the web application, I see a similar scenario. I see my project, I see a default ASPX file, and again, some of the files are hidden from me. We can change that by selecting the Show All Files option. Behind the default ASPX file, which provides my presentation layer, I'll see a designer and I'll also see the code behind file that's provided for me and it has the events of the page such as page load and other events in the page lifecycle. As you can see, it follows a similar model as Windows Forms. In this case, the web form inherits from the page object. I can also manipulate this inheritance model by creating my own page and choosing that for inheritance instead. In the references, I'll see references that are applicable for a web application, so I'll see system.web, system.web extensions, system.xml. I don't have to use all these extensions, but typically, in this type of project, 
I will most likely end up using a lot of these, and instead of adding the references myself, they'll be provided for me. Inside of my project, again, although this is a web application, I still have the manifest or the assembly info located where I can change the trademark, copyright, and version information. And likewise, I have my application that has application settings, as they did in the Visual Basic Windows Form application, that I can bubble up to the surface and change directly in XML. As you can see, the model of managing your solutions is quite similar between a variety of different applications. Feel free to experiment with other applications that are available.